Hello everybody and welcome to the second last, well actually, I could probably do several more of these. Yeah, I will, <laughs> I will in fact. But let's just say our next DLC speculation video covering different DLCs that I've designed with update features to um, complement. <laughs> That's the word I was looking for. But this time we're covering primates, a sorely lacking group of animals in Planet Zoo. And I thought I could spice up the roster a little bit. Um, I have included the Hammerdrive Baboon in this roster, mainly because I'm very confident that the Gelada will be chosen instead for the Highlands pack, because Geladas are much more known for their Highland presence than Hammerdrive Baboons. But either way, uh, whatever we get, it could be a substitute. So, yeah, let's get into the monkey business. I know it's definitely not a monkey, but our first animal is the Cockerel Safarco, a lemma of Madagascar, as that's the only place they're found. Um, and it would be one of the most unique animals in the game, full stop, given that they can't exactly walk. So instead, they leap on the ground, as you can see in the little image in the top left. And yeah, it would be very interesting to just see that, all these little leaping lemurs hopping around your enclosures. That would be just so fun to watch. And they have all these unique movements, like they'll bob their heads around and all that sort of interesting movement. And the way they jump as well, uh, vertical jumping from tree to tree, that would just be a cool thing to see. Cockerel Safarka is probably my my most requested primate, as they are just, I just want to see them in Plant Zoo so much. Like, it, it would be so fun to watch, like. That's what that's what I think with many animals that aren't in the game yet, because I know some of their special behaviors and unique quirks that others don't really think about. Like the fishing cat, it might be another cat that it dives into water to catch fish on a daily basis. And it's also another small cat from Southeast Asia, of which we only have one other small cat from Southeast Asia being the clouded leopard. And even they're not that small. But um, Cockerel Sparker, most unique Lima we could get, or so we think. We'll get to that in a sec. And Hammer Drives Baboon needs no introduction. One of the most requested primates in the game. Silver mane and red button face. <laughs> Found in around the Red Sea and in on cliffs, savannas, and in desert areas of the Horn of Africa up into Saudi Arabia and the other parts of the Middle East. A highly represented animal in zoos would make a great animal to the game. It hasn't yet, but Plant Zoo doesn't have a true baboon just yet, and Hammerdrive's baboon is the perfect choice. Now, I said <laughs> um, most unique primate we could ever get for Cockerel's Sparker, but I, I really taste the cake for it. It really just doesn't look like a primate. <laughs> It is so odd in so many ways. That big bushy tail, all those white hairs, um, those big bat-like ears, the bright orange eyes, the rodent-like teeth, and not to mention the creepy skeletal fingers on each hand. Yeah, the I.I. are very weird, but also very cool creatures that I would love to see introduced to Planet Zoo. Like it, it'd be great to think of just seeing an I.I. just tapping around on a tree with that finger looking for food. Like that could be a new enrichment item, a forage tree that the eye climbs into or climbs onto. Although we could have new nest boxes for primates such as eye eyes, that'd be interesting. And it climbs up, taps around and uh, gnaws its way in through the bark with its rodent like teeth and reels out a bug with it with its long skeletal middle finger. That's just an idea for the I.I., but they're also nocturnal, um, which in comparison to all the other primates in the game is often unheard of. So they would be much more active at night. So that, that could be a unique little attribute um, to the I.I.'s favor. Next animal is the incredibly cute common squirrel monkey, a species found widely in zoos in America and Europe and Asia. Um, not in Australia. We've got the black cap squirrel monkey, which I have got as an alternative later. But common squirrel monkeys are 
most most little ki- little kids' favorite kind of monkey when you go to the zoo because they're often displayed in sort of petting zoo, children's zoo sections. Like Wildlife Explorers Base Camp at San Diego Zoo's got some common squirrel monkeys, I believe. Uh, Bronx Zoo, I would think, has got some common squirrel monkeys in their children's zoo section. Like they're a very family friendly little monkey, and would would spice up the primate roster of South America. Um, even with the Latin America animal pack that I speculated having tons of primates, but um, yeah, squirrel monkeys are just another group that hasn't really seen the light of day in Planet Zoo. So, and there are so many types of monkeys in South America that it's hard to choose. But common squirrel monkeys should definitely come into Planet Zoo one day. The golden snub-nosed monkey is one of my favorite monkeys with their unique blue faces. And yeah, they're very they're very well adapted to cold environments, living off almost nothing in the winter. Um, and yeah, just another Chinese animal that um, doesn't really get enough attention these days. It's been recently uh, shown in several documentaries. Like, it took a long time, but we eventually got the golden snub-nosed monkey in a fair few different documentaries. But um, the golden snub-nosed monkey, I don't know how many times I can say that at such a fast pace but it would be a nice addition nonetheless and it's requested by the community not much else i can really say they're just cool <laughs> uh, uh, mantle jeriza a or the eastern black and white colobus is a very interesting primate from africa as they have virtually no nose but have very long white hanging hair on their coming from their back and on their tail. And Frontier hasn't really done hanging hair yet, so it'd be interesting how they would tackle that with a primate. And another update feature I, I would include with this pack would definitely be like adding hanging hair for the orangutan. The orangutan just doesn't look right without its quintessential hanging hair. I didn't include it, but um, yeah, it would be great to see nonetheless Frontier please give the orangutan some hanging locks. That, that's all I ask. But Mantle Jeriza is by far a great example of what hanging hair could look like in Planet Zoo. Whiteface Saki has also got a little bit of hanging hair. It's got very long hair, in fact, but is not the most requested primate in the game, but is another unique family of animals, a uh, unique family of primates, I should say, because it's only primates in this video. Um, from South America. South America's just got tons of different different types of primates. Like you've got howler monkeys, you've got spider monkeys, you've got capuchins, you've got uakaris, sakis, squirrel monkeys, marmosets, tamarins, uh, night monkeys, or owl monkeys, duraculis. Um, and yeah, there's just so many different types of primate that you can choose from. And white pace saki is another one of those. Um, as I said, they're not the most requested primate, but I know... Uh, a few people that do really want the white face Saki, and I can see why. They are very mysterious monkeys, and would make a fine addition to any rainforest-themed zoo. And the last um, proper animal for the pack that isn't an alternative is the Pygmy Slow Loris, one of the smallest primates in the world. Um, would make a great addition to a either a walkthrough exhibit or a unique kind of nocturnal exhibit box. I'm, I'm hesitant on the walkthrough because they are highly venomous. Um, I think I've said this in a previous video, as they have a venom that is in, I, it's, I think it's, um, it goes from, the, it comes from they, some cer certain glands, I think on their wrists, that mixes with their saliva to create the venom. And um, they rub it all over themselves and apparently can rot bone. Or it's either rot, rot bone or rot flesh. Either way, it's horrific. But, um, yeah, I think to keep it safe, um, put it in a unique kind of nocturnal um, exhibit box. Make it much bigger than the regular exhibit box that we've got. Um, like maybe, I don't know, 8x8. Eight eight. That, that would be a good one for this little mon uh, monkey. No, it's a prosimian. <laughs> Damn. Getting into the monkey business now, even with animals that aren't even monkeys. Anyway, a few alternatives I have, or just additions, like 
We can make this an expansion pack. There are so many cool primates to choose from. The Debrazes monkey, one of the only animals tol that tolerates the mantle Jerisa in a habitat as they share slightly different diets. It's either slightly different diets or the same diet. I cannot quite remember what it was. It was. But another African monkey that is very welcome. Francois Langers, another Asian species that is widely represented in zoos. A, an endangered species um, would make a great addition, especially with those white sideburns and the bright orange babies. Like It's very interesting how primates have these unique characteristics. But I believe bright orange babies is to help um, different members of a Francois Langer troop to find babies and to take care of them. So I um, think it's a neat little trick there. Um, black cap squirrel monkey is my most familiar form of squirrel monkey, as there are only two types. You've got the common and you've got the black caps. But black caps are all through Australia's zoos in almost every one I've been to. Um, but they, they would be a nice addition in place of the common squirrel monkey, but that's just a personal preference of mine. If we could get them one day, that I wouldn't mind that at all. But, um, yeah, just a little alternative squirrel monkey here. Um, the Patas monkey of the Congo, another interesting addition with their, their unique moustache. I mean, I don't know if it's really unique, but I don't really know too many other moustache monkeys. That reminds me of the Lorax, you know. In some weird way, it reminds me of the Lorax. But it would be a great species to put with gorillas or any other Congo species. Lion tail macaque is another alternative. Um, I don't know why it's called lion tailed. It should be the lion mane macaque. But um, as I've learned, you can't really change a name now because once something is named in zoology, it stays that way. Um, yeah, so lion tail macaque, a species of, from India and, and also endangered. And with that unique appearance, it would certainly make an interesting addition to the Asian roster. Another species of macaque is the black crested macaque of Sulawesi, a species that you can put with your babarusas. And another macaque, the Barbary macaque, um, one of the only monkey, uh, it, the only monkey in uh, all of Europe, found in Gibraltar in Spain, as they've crossed from Morocco and just made their home in Gibraltar. But they would be an interesting addition as as a cross-continent primate, which would be something that we don't have it yet. Because primates are usually only found on one continent and one continent only, but Barbary macaques, they found a way. Uh, bald uakari is another species that can be considered not found um, often outside the native range. I believe Los Angeles Zoo's got them, and that's the only place outside of South America that has them. But would be an interesting addition, um, nonetheless. And our last alternative is the northern white cheek gibbon. Um, we already have two gibbons, but the northern white cheek gibbon is widespread in captivity and would make a great addition. A few update features I've got here revolve all around animals. So one is increasing the social group limit of the hyenas particularly the spotted hyena, striped hyena not so much, they're more solitary than anything else. But spotted hyenas are often seen in large groups in the wild, yet in plant zoo we can only have up to four. Imagine having a herd, a uh, herd? <laughs> having a clan of up to, I don't know, 24 hyenas? That, that, would, that would be insane to see, but who knows, while Frontier's at it, they could give the hyena a little bit of a facelift, make it, um, give it a bit of a remodel to resemble the one you can see in the picture before you. As hyenas do have a very particular look, uh, and I think the one that we've got right now is a bit too dog-like dog for, um, for my taste. Um, another addition would be aquatic play. So animals like elephants will often play in water to increase social bonds. And it would just be a fun thing to watch, just elephants rolling over each other in the water, just having a blast. And animals like African hunting dogs and bears and tigers, all this, all these sort of animals that spend a lot of time in water, um, would be great to see a bit of aquatic play. Just 
it, it would just liven up the aquatic experience. Speaking of livening up the aquatic experience, um, giving tapirs and water buffalo the ability of deep diving um, would be interesting. Now, they don't exactly swim around, but they do walk on the bottom of rivers and ponds, um, searching for food or just a, as a means of escape from predators, particularly in the tapirs case. But um, it would just give these undulates a bit more unique characteristics to them. Like, imagine you're looking at your water buffalo enclosure and it just emerges from the water um, and you couldn't even know it was there. And the tapirs too. I've seen um, many videos of tapirs um, spending a lot of time under the water. So that being um, brought into Plant Zoo would be a great addition. Speaking of something that we don't have quite yet, given the ability for the Nile monitor and Asian water monitor, as well as the Chinese pangolin to give them the ability to climb as they climb readily in the wild um, and in real life in general. Um, so those are just two improvements to those particular groups of animals that I would like to see. And one last thing, given brachiation to bonobos and chimpanzees as aside from orangutans, gibbons and spider monkeys, they, they too brachiate. And then we would have every animal of the tail to break it on the planet in Planet Zoo. So, um, yeah, all these update features just revolve around the animals. And I think I've covered pretty much every other update feature we could possibly want in the previous videos. But um, with that, that's, um, that's all for the primate speculation video. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of primates that could possibly come into Planet Zoo. Um, in, in, in my personal interest, what would your primate animal pack be? Um, leave it in the comments below, as I would love to see what you guys come up with. And with that, like if you want to see more, Avery is the next pack on the list. And yeah, I've got an idea of how that can be structured. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.